Another group of Russian servicemen have been taken hostage in Russia's Kursk region after the Ukrainian army surprise incursion in the area this week. The images were distributed on Telegram channels. Left without any support in their military position, the soldiers decided to surrender to Ukrainian soldiers. This is not the first group to surrender to the Ukrainian army. As many as 300 Russian soldiers were taken hostage in the first two days in incursion, according to media reports. On August 7, Ukrainian defense forces captured over 40 soldiers of the Russian armed forces in Kursk. The day before, Ukrainian troops captured 35 Russian soldiers on the border of Kursk region. Ukraine launched a surprise ground assault into Russia's soil with troops and armored vehicles on Tuesday. Russia said that up to 1,000 Ukrainian troops took part in the cross-border attack. Ukrainian troops have reportedly advanced 25 kilometers into Russian territory. The head of the Russian general staff, Valery Gerasimov, was informed in advance by intelligence about Ukraine's preparations for a ground offensive in the Kursk region, but ignored these warnings. As Bloomberg reports, citing a source close to the Kremlin, Russian intelligence knew about the Ukrainian army's planned operation two weeks in advance, but the Russian military leadership ignored these reports. In particular, this information was not reported to Russian dictator Putin. The agency's source notes that Putin will most likely not decide to fire Gerasimov, despite the large-scale cleansing in the Russian Defense Ministry, but the dictator's patience with the general is already running out. The day before, Gerasimov reported to Putin that the advance of the Ukrainian army in the Kursk region had allegedly been stopped and promised to reach the borders of the Russian Federation, but since then the situation of the Russians in the region has only worsened. The Ukrainian armed forces continued their offensive and occupied several more settlements. At the moment, the Ukrainian military controls an area of more than 400 square kilometers. In addition, they managed to capture several dozen Russian soldiers. Analysts note that the Ukrainian offensive took the Russian army generals by surprise. The Russian troops were poorly prepared and in the first stages of the operation offered virtually no resistance to the Ukrainian armed forces. Sergei Zyanov, former intelligence officer of Russia, called the rapidly developing events in the Kursk region dangerous, realizing the recklessness of Putin, who has nothing left to lose. Out of desperation, the Russian dictator may even strike the Kursk nuclear power plant since he does not care about the consequences. The former intelligence officer recalled the statements of Russian propaganda during the war. The Russian side has been talking about the Ukrainian side preparing terrorist attacks at the Kursk NPP for three years now. This is a narrative where we even suspected that Russia itself wanted to arrange some kind of incident at the Kursk nuclear power plant and then blame it on the Ukrainians and thus gain the opportunity to use tactical nuclear weapons because it turns out that such an incident would untie the nuclear hands of the Russian Federation. The Russian military command has a number of possible courses of action that it could take in response to the Ukrainian operation in the Kursk region. As analysts at the U.S. Institute for the Study of War, ISW, write, it is not yet possible to say which of these possible courses of action is most likely, and most likely the Russian military command will not rely on only one course of action. At the same time, the Russian military command's decision will be influenced by its perception of the size and capabilities of Ukrainian forces in the area. Option 1. The Russian military command can use conscripts, FSB border guards, the Russian National Guard and other irregular forces already deployed in the area of the international border. Russian military commanders may pursue this option if they assess that lower quality forces, which are likely to be less well equipped, can effectively stop Ukrainian forces which have reportedly successfully employed innovative tactics and technological capabilities, the analysts wrote. Option 2. The Russian military command may decide to use the northern group of forces deployed in the border areas of the Kursk, Bryansk and Belgorod regions. At the same time, analysts write, the ability of the northern group to conduct effective defensive operations and significant counter-attacks is unclear, and its redeployment to push back Ukrainian forces in the Kursk region will create 
vulnerabilities in Russian defenses on other parts of the border. The Russian military command may also try to use this option if it considers offensive operations by the northern group of forces in the north of the Kharkov region to be less of a priority than defensive operations in the Kursk region. The ISW notes, Option 3. The Russian military command may decide to transfer operational reserves accumulated for the offensive actions planned for the summer of 2024 from other places on the front. The Russian military command may decide to retain existing operational reserves intended for priority sectors of the front, in particular to support a higher tempo of the offensive in the Donetsk region and instead transfer frontline units from lower priority sectors to the Kursk region. Option 4. The Russian military command may attempt to preserve the forces it currently has deployed to the Kursk region, but at the same time transfer significant air and strike units to the area. However, it is unclear whether the current Russian forces deployed in the Kursk region will be able to use the effect of air power. It is also unclear whether large-scale air operations over the Kursk region will disrupt Russia's ability to regularly use tactical aircraft to carry out glider bombing strikes along the entire front line. The ISW notes, 